All right, so the Avalanche, stop me if you've heard this one before, Kyle, from not that long ago. The Avalanche with a one to nothing lead, give up a goal late in the third, and then give up a goal in overtime and lose to the Detroit Red Wings two to one and waste a great performance by Eustace Ananen. We'll break it all down. New episode of Locked On Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. That's always appreciated. Make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LPN underscore Avalanche on Twitter X, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram and threads. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, locked on avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live, and make sure you are subscribed to our subtext as well. A link to that is in the show notes below. And when you do, you chat with Kyle and I one on one. Get your opinions on everything Avalanche, which we share on this very podcast. Um, all right, sir. Yeah, we're just going to be pretty much talking about this Avs Red Wings game that uh, Avs drop in overtime and. Sh- Let's get this out of the way now. Well, at least they got the point. Whenever you go to yeah. overtime and you, and you get the point, like you, you, everybody always has to say that part of it, and it's like, okay, fine, we we said it. Um, but no, like I, I, it's not it's not good enough for me right now because I didn't like a lot of this game, and this is even before the final, right? And I know sometimes when the Abs lose, fans, us, maybe we, you know, we'll we'll, we'll come on here. And we'll kind of like drill down on on the reasons why they lost. And even though if they have, have played a good game, uh, you kind of tend to focus on like, well, they lost, and and let's focus on the bad stuff because they lost. Um, I was texting a buddy of mine who's a Red Wings fan. We were kind of going back and forth during the game, and I'm like, I, I just don't like how this game is being played. And, and it's not that I thought like the Avalanche were gonna like lose the game. I thought they were, you know, they they were in a position to win the game, obviously. Um, But I just didn't like how this game was going early. The third kind of changed. The third, there was a, you know, there's a lot of action. Um, You you saw a a lot of good things from the avalanche. Uh, But once again, there is some issues. This one is again with the power play. The power play is just, just (laughs) lost its edge. Um, Give me your your thoughts on the overall of of this game. And then we'll kind of just obviously go into it. Yeah, for somebody who calls himself Shaggy Von Doom, I'm not walking out of this one as doom and gloom as everyone else, the majority out there. And it's mm-hmm. it's it's one of those that you can honestly, if you have a complaint or something to celebrate, you're right with this team right now. And it's it's funny to think, Chris, we were in New York mm-hmm. watching the Avalanche secure that road record. It mm. was an incredible feat, and now this team can't win on the road. They're they're just just hot steaming garbage on the road. Mm. And yep. when you break down this game according to the stats, it's it's balanced. It's it's almost right down the middle. All it's, oh okay okay. I because I, yeah. I was I was gonna say like mm, there's something I want to get to, but I, yeah. I okay from team yeah, stats is what you're saying. T- yes, team okay. stats. It's it and it felt that way through the first two periods. It felt like a Honestly, just the same two teams. It, it, yeah, they were, it was, there was no bend. There was no break. It was just manage and get through. And then things kind of fell apart a little bit in the third. But I mean, all in all, it wasn't a horrible throw everything out. This is a terrible game because there's a lot of good that you can extract from this game, but there's also a lot of bad that it's also a lot of the things we've been talking about and people disappearing and, Uh, you mentioned like the power play does not exist right now and you would like to see like nathan mckinnon scored okay that and again the deeper you go into this season the more that's not going to be just enough so you you need somebody else you can't have rijo scoring two goals either so somebody's got to step up and and i i agree with you and like I, i thought they did a lot of good things and 
this is uh, you know i started the show by saying like stop you've heard this before you mentioned new york that this this was like the ranger game like they're doing yeah. a lot of good things and have one goal to yeah. show for it so i thought they and I say they're doing a lot of good things, but I, I didn't I didn't really feel like they were in complete control nope. of this game for the I thought it was a very evenly matched game. I thought it was, uh, uh, you know, some back and forth, some good chances on both sides, not great chances. And again, that's for the first two periods. I thought things really amped up in the third on both sides. And that's what I was kind of wanting to see from the avalanche for for the first 40. And again, not not horrible. But there, it was just, I, I was just feeling le- le- like empty. Like, I, I, yeah, they have the lead after two, but man, I just feel like they have more to give here. Um, and again, I'm not trying to say like that they were not putting in the effort. I think continually the effort is there. You just have nothing to show for it. And, and the power play, again, I thought, you know, the, the, the Red Wings do next to nothing to defend you on the power play. When they're on the penalty kill, they do next to nothing, and and you you could do whatever you wanted, and and again, this is like the second game where you know the 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 team that's defending you is more concerned with you know uh, positioning, which is fine if that's how they want to set up their penalty kill, that's their prerogative. For the Avalanche, you should be picking that apart, and and I don't know what it, like we'll get to the Miko thing in a little bit. I, I do want to talk about him, but I don't know like. If it's now in in the mind, there's got to be some of it that's going on in the mind of we cannot get we can't seem to get a goal in on the extra man. And, you know, I got this vibe and this feel in this game and the, the avalanche, they're kind of they built this for themselves like this avalanche quote unquote, mm-hmm. like for everybody listening, I'm doing air quotes in the air like this avalanche brand of hockey where they're a great team top to bottom they're what all the other locked on shows talk about here come the avalanche you gotta you gotta play your best game everybody's playing their best game against the colorado avalanche and it feels like the avalanche have to be bothered to play anything other than just like cruise control pass a hockey like to step up against the detroit red wings is an inconvenience to 80 percent of this roster and it's just like, do we have to? Like, it's it's not it's not that important. We have Toronto. Like, we got this far. We have we're we're up one nothing. Like, it it you want to see them have a little sense of urgency in those moments. Like, mm-hmm. we talk about the Roaring Twenties line, just to see a little urgency out of the Roaring Twenties line would be nice because we could zero in and we're going to uh, in the third segment on Miko Ranton and possibly another one. Mm. Uh, but like yeah. it, there's you could zero in on these guys but just as a team as a cohesive unit as a line just a little bit more urgency if you go up to no, to nothing on this Detroit Red Wings team it's over that's it you taken the fight out of the Red Wings because that's enough it took everything they had to swing it to tie and win it in overtime took a carryover mm. penalty in overtime to win this game like if you just do just a little bit more, it makes it easier for the rest of the sixty, where you're not having to battle and be inconvenienced at the end of the game. We well, mentioned the the Roaring Twenties line, and and it, they I, they I thought looked good, you know, just like everything else. I thought they looked good, and they had that one shift where they just held possession, and then Bednar threw the top line out to follow them up, and that's when they got their one goal. Yeah. So yep. they they kind of set up that goal that that the top line actually got. Um, interesting stats or stats, whatever you want to say for for the Avalanche here, right? And this is this is where it's just you know the, the non acceptable things to me. You look at the the forwards, mm-hmm. the shots, the shots for forwards. Nathan McKinnon had eleven. He had 11 shots, right? Every other forward, with the exception of one, had one shot. Are you looking at the stats or no? Because I, I'll yep. have you guess if you know. Okay, if, if you know who it is. So yeah. out there in podcast land, try to take a guess of, of the guy who you think. I'll give you a couple seconds as I finish this thought of who do you think the other guy is that had more than one shot 
for the avalanche when it comes to forwards. I'll give you another second. Because if you if you said Chris Wagner, you would be right. Everybody's favorite. I have the poster for everybody. It's it's right here. No, I'm just kidding. I do not have it's a Chris crazy. Wagner. Crazy. Like he had two. He had two shot. Everybody else, with the exception of Arturi Lekkinen and uh Kiviranta, Kiviranta. who had zero. Yeah. Everybody else had one. One shot on goal that can't happen especially when when nathan mckinnon has 11 and the rest of his line uh, uh miko rantanen included miko rantanen had one shot on goal and um uh jonathan Druen had one as well come on guys <laughs> like yeah we, we gotta step it up here that is not good yeah, that's what we're talking about. Like, you got to step up the effort just a little bit. This is like bartering with a 10 year old. Like, my when I'm talking to my 10 year old daughter, when I ask her to help out, she's like, I did. And she moved like one little thing. Like, one shot is <laughs> not here contributing. There, like, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> like, yes, you took a shot. And that is a contribution, but we need a little bit more. Not enough. Because a you did a lot didn't, more. Yeah, we need a, a lot, lot more. more because guess what? We still lost. And I'm we're having this conversation. Yes, you contributed with your one shot, but how about two? How about five? And and I I, I, I think they gave Miko one after the fact somewhere. I don't know it because I, I thought I saw a stat sheet that had him at zero uh, right after the game. So maybe they added one. I mean, and on the on the defensive side, Byram with two, Taze with two, Makar with three, Manson with three. Your defenders are out shooting your forwards. That's not good, guys. <laughs> not good. Uh, so your 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 mic's muted. So why don't you fix that? We'll 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 get a quick break in here, and then uh, we'll discuss uh, more of this. Especially, got to talk about Eustace Annan. He yep. was great. Yeah. He was great. All right, we'll do that coming up next. All right, let's hear from Indeed, because we're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. So don't search, match with Indeed. And if you need to hire, then you got to get Indeed, because Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. So ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging. So you can connect with candidates faster. Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. And listeners of Locked On Avalanche will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash Locked On. So just go to Indeed.com slash Locked On right now. And support Locked On Avalanche by saying you heard about Indeed on this very podcast. Indeed.com slash Locked On. Terms and conditions apply. If you need to hire, then you need Indeed. All right. So uh, more more on on stats and stuff like that. And I want to bring up Kale McCarr because he's gone another game where he's been held pointless. This is six or seven, seven in a row now. So the the thing is, like, I, I feel like he's he he's trying to work through it. You know what I mean? He is. I I feel like he's playing okay. I, he he's on the offensive end. So I feel like he's playing okay to to get off of that. You know, to end that streak. But um, it's just I don't know. They're, 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 he's like a microcosm of the power play, mm -hmm. just not coming for him, which is just just odd. So, um, where you is your something. God now? Yeah. No, right. So it, he's, he's back here. Oh, hang on. Okay. Problem solved. Go ahead. It's, it's one of those that yes, Kale McCarr is human, but it's, you could lament and moan or you can get over it. Somebody else could step up. It's the mm. same thing with the Miko thing. Like, guess what? He's not on his game. Somebody mm -hmm. needs to be. We could yeah. just we could throw up our hands and say, "Oh, Kale hasn't scored in seven games." Well, what what did we do when Kale was injured before? What have we done? Like or, or the whole season last year when guys were injured, everybody was, was step. It's 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 not the end of the world. It's you can you could step and like this is a taser. He could step up. Bo Byram 
he's got a lot to prove. He's been looking good and putting pieces together. Step up. Like it's it's not the end of the world. You could you could move past this just a little bit. Yes, it you you know he could do better, but you want you want to see it. You want to see something come of this this progress and putting things together. Mm -hmm. But it it's a frustrating, yes, but it's not the end of the world. And welcome back. Well, <laughs> well, someone who did step up, at least for this game, was used to sanding it. Mm -hmm. He he and this is now two games in a row where he has has looked good. This one much better than than the last one. Even the last one, he looked okay. Um, and and that's who you feel for. And and you saw it, like when 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 the uh, Red Wings scored that goal in overtime to win it. He kind of did that, like as soon as it went in, kind of just shook his his stick a little bit and kind of skated off. Yep. In like frustration. So you like seeing that a little bit, right? Um, but you 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 feel for him because. I don't, it's, it's tough because it's like, I, some people are going to be like, Oh, the team let him down. It's like, Oh, well, I, it, you know, I don't want to go that far, but you feel bad because he put in the work in this game and, and the save he made at the end of the regulation, JT Confer of all people who could have, that would have been a story, yeah. um, you know, at least got them a point, but he was good. He was beyond good. He, he was Excellent, I'll say. Yeah, and that's I almost I almost got swept up in the moment. I almost said, "Well, backup goalie is addressed." Uh, it I, it was it was think? one of, it was one of those showings. Give me one more of those, and I'll be saying mm -hmm. that. I'll be saying that. Um, he, he, oh, man. I, I I he'll get another one, and that might be how the Avalanche are looking at this. You, you're going to get at least one more, and then what you do there maybe tells us what we're going to do come trade deadline time if we're going to address this. And Even if it's somewhat good, I, I I think the Avalanche really like what is happening with him right now. We we might not be addressing that at, at trade deadline if, if he gives you another output like this. And, you know, just take a step back just a little bit more. Prozvatov is, just was named AHL All-Star of the Tearing Week. It up. Like, Tearing so it up. It, maybe that is healing itself. And if mm -hmm. you're going to get more production out, and going back to your point about they let Eustace down, the veterans in that locker room after that game are saying that exact same thing to everyone else in that room. They're pointing to him. That he had an, a stellar game, a incredible game. And you, this is one of those where you take the leadership moment and say, hey, he played how we should have played. We are not having another one like this again. We mm -hmm. we are we're going to make this up to you, and this is this is one of those building blocks for the next moment, the next start. I you know that conversation was said. It was stick taps and hey, you had a great game out there. We let you down. It's not going to happen again. And you hope to see something better than this. And the Avalanche will have a better effort, and then you'll see a better Eustis. And if you see a better Eustis, then yes, we could say the backup goalie. Yeah. Is addressed and then throw us in with all of these free agent trade deadline gobbledygook that's all yeah. over the place because that's just where we are. It's trade deadline season. My guess is your your next two games um, are at home, and that's against Toronto and Dallas. You would think Yorgiev is going to start those two. The game after that is against Chicago in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So you would think you know maybe he goes there and, and, and plays them. And then in, I'm saying one game, he might get a few. He might get a couple more. Just, so they get a really good look to see if he can can do this and, and continue this. And Detroit is is no – Detroit's in a, yep. in, a, in, a, in a wild card spot, and they can score. I think – I was shocked this game ended 2-1. to one. Yeah. Because, because, like, these are uh, – I think Detroit is top five, top six in the league in, in, in scoring, and the Avalanche are usually one, two, or three. So, um, you know, that it, it, it was a game that, you know, it, it was a test because this is an offensive team and, and he, he, and they got 30 shots on goal. So it's not like they held them under 20. Remember those days when the uh, avalanche, like we had a run of the avalanche holding teams under 20 shots on goal. It was like, and winning games, games on the road. Road. Yeah. So, um, I, 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 I'm wondering if, if, even if, he gets two more starts, three more starts, two more starts before the trade deadline, and they're somewhat good. 
I think they are encouraged of where this is going for him. He's played eight games, nine games total in his career in the at the NHL level. And it's what do the Avalanche want to do? Do they want to say like, okay, uh, this is a good start, and maybe next year is when we go full time use this backup, or do they just say, you know, you're probably not going to play in the playoffs anyway, unless you know something catastrophic happens to to Georgiev with an injury, or maybe if you have one of those freakish game twos, the other way around, uh, when when you're losing seven to nothing. <laughs> In a Stanley Cup final, you bring him in for that. Like you're, you're, just, you're, you're, you're basically an e bug at that stage in the game in in, in the postseason. Um, and maybe they just say like, we don't need to go address that, and that gives us the opportunity now to go address other things at the trade deadline. And because we're we're okay or we're good enough, if he's going to do that for us as a backup goalie, I think he proved a lot tonight. I think he proved a lot. I, I definitely, I think his stock is up and I think he might be turning that corner where every time they talk about use, this is, this is the potential of what we could see. I feel like we're finally starting to arrive there. And mm -hmm. if that's the case, if I was McFarlane, if I was Sackick, if I was Bednar, I would cross my eyes and pretend that's Pavel Frenzos back there and ride one, a one B. And then if something goes wrong, call up Prozvatov and figure out what's going on in the AHL. See if it translates back to the NHL. See if he learned something new. And I think the goalie yeah. position's all right. It could be. We shall see. Um, all right, more on Miko. Let's let's discuss uh, Mr. Ranton and what's going on with him there, uh, and we'll do that right after this. New sponsor in the house, and that is Ibotta. Grocery bills are so expensive these days, but now they don't have to be. Start getting cash back on your grocery shopping with the free Ibotta app and get cash back every time you shop. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys which makes Kyle happy. So you can make sure you're betting inflation no matter what your purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year, and that could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. So you can buy that flight that you've been eyeing, that game you've been dying to go to, or that fancy dinner that you've been craving. And other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, just add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and you get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. So join over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. And right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code Locked On NHL when you register. So go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use that code Locked On NHL. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google Play or App Store. And once again, use that code locked on NHL. All right, uh, let's get to, let's talk about Miko, what's going on there a little bit more, and then we'll get to some subtext people. Uh, lots of comments on subtext tonight. So, um we mentioned Miko briefly earlier, having the one shot on goal, and it, it it to me it's more than that. It like Miko play his style is like he he he's a big body, so he uses that to his advantage, and he's continuing to do that. And he kind of just like floats along. He's usually right place, right time. He he picks his spots when he attacks. He you know he, he's a very good passer. He's a scorer. Um, you're not getting a lot of that right now. And for me, like the scoring part of it in terms of goal scoring, I, I don't get too wound up when a goal scorer is going through a rut because they're going to break out of that. My thing with Miko is his, his facilitating and his passing, mm -hmm. um, especially on the power play because he's not even attempting to make that cross ice pass or that bumper pass or even slide himself down closer to the net he is just way out outside the dots he's almost near the boards and what are you going to do out there man like that's not your game and and guys are just letting him stay out there 
So his <coughs> his passing and everything right now is just a little bit suspect, and I don't I don't know why. I don't know what what's because that's a big part of his game, and it's just being taken away right now. And see, the thing is, it feels lazy. This this goes back to the beginning when we were talking about the effort. Yeah. Because Kale McCarr has seven games, no points, zero, nothing, nada, nothing. Miko well, has fighting, that, but he's, he's fighting. fighting. Yeah. And, but but then you have the reverse. You right. have Miko who has 71 points. He he had an assist. He had an assist in the Vancouver game. Like he, he got a goal yeah. in the Washington game. Like he's still accumulating points, but he had the one shot, the one assist. And that's it. Like he could do so much more and you can watch him with your eyeballs. You can watch him with one, put up an eye patch on. He can, you can watch it. And he's just, the effort's not there. Like the passing is just not there. It's just disengaged. Mm. He's so, stumbling yeah. into those points. And it's just like, if you could clean that up, you can improve Druen and Nathan McKinnon. You could also improve Kale McCarr. It's one of those yeah. that you, if he could just clean it up, tighten it up, just slow it down, he could improve the game of everyone else on his line, and Kale needs it. And it's you just don't see him digging for those pucks like he used to in the boards. He was he's not the first one on the four check anymore. Mm -hmm. He just kind of like lumbers into the play, lumbers out of a play, barely gets it out of the zone. You just you want to see a little bit more urgency out of Miko. So, like the way the, his style of play is when things are clicking for him, it's man, look at him. He just does things yeah. so effortlessly. And when when it's not, the the mindset is like, is, does he even care? Is is he yeah. is he being lazy? So it, I think he plays the same way no matter what, but it's just his style just looks worse when things are not coming for him. You know what I mean? So because that pass that he made to to McKinnon for that goal was gorgeous. That was beautiful. Yeah. And is but, you know, okay, then that's the one moment and then what about the rest of the, what do you play 25 minutes probably tonight? Like yeah. okay, for for a lot of the other minutes that you're out there, it's just kind of floating around along Miko and and I love the guy. Absolutely love the guy. He's one of my favorite players on the team and you can rely on him. But for this game, it's, it's, you know, that invisibility factor is dude. The, the, I mean, you're, how many times you get, is the puck on your stick, whether it's five on five or on a power play, you got to get back to what's been working for you. We're, you know, and, and it's just, it wasn't there. At least. And then, and then you, the, the big moose in the room is you have <laughs> $9 million that you should care like you are you're paid upper echelon i think, he cares. I think now, he cares you're it's yeah. you've got to give us a little bit more because you're paid to give a little bit more like right we know what you could do and they pay you to a certain level and they you were the most you were the highest paid player on the team last year for yeah. this reason because of what you could do you need a little bit more or the, your contract is also coming up in a couple of years you have to keep that in mind Oh, he's gonna get paid. Don't worry about that. He will get paid. Like, it, 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 yeah, don't. It, he's getting his. Miko's getting his, and probably with the Avalanche. Um, all right, let's get over to subtext and see what some people got to say over there. Uh, here's Kyle Steele. He says the power pass looked great tonight, just like Bednar said in the post game. I didn't watch any of the post game yet because we're recording this right after the game is over. If Bednar did say that, that's uh, a great way to to describe it. Kind of funny and and true. Uh, but he said we need to get that shot mentality back. Um, yeah, I, again, I, I thought that I thought the power play was good. It was there a little bit overpassing in the power play. Yeah, there was, there was. So yeah. um, he's not wrong in saying that. Uh, Madam Battleax, the that was just exciting and honestly a good game. Yeah, she's right. Yeah. I mean, we, we can say it was a good game, even though the Avalanche, you know, didn't get the two points. Um, I just cannot cheer enough for Anunin. That was one heck of an effort by the goalie. He kept up in this one. Uh, I have some quote, have you seen me flyers posted? And the search party is out looking for the Avs power play goals. Have you seen them? 
uh, reward if found by Dallas, which, by the way, Dallas lost as well. So if the Avalanche had got both points, they would have been tied with them. So um, thank you, Madam Battleaxe, for, for putting out the flyers. And hopefully that works. If that works, all credit goes to Madam Battleaxe. It's almost like that 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 meme that goes around of it never existed. It never happened. It yeah. never happened. That's that's the Avalanche power yeah. play. There, it, it's almost like and like the road winning uh, streak. Like all of that, it it's, it feels like a distant memory. Like the mm-hmm. a good power play and a good team on the road. I I cannot remember those days. Uh, Amy, she says, "Oh, that was painful." Overall, the team played pretty well, just couldn't produce results. It felt like we should have been up by more than one in the third. The penalty at the end of, re- end of regulation was painful. Silver lining is that Anonin was solid. Yeah, yep. I thought the penalty that they called on O'Connor at the end, like, why are you going to call that? Like, <laughs> he, he was kind of going down as it was. Did what? Did he? Was there a little bit there by by O'Connor? Okay. Um, I just thought that was not necessary. I mean, they killed it off, obviously, but um, kind of a, a weak call there at that point in the game, if you ask me. No, I was I was glad they did it because it reminded me LOC's back, baby. <laughs> that is, well, I mean, he got the penalty though. <laughs> I don't want it. Like, oh, it, there he is. If, if someone else gets it and he's uh, he's helping with the penalty kill, yeah, that's what I want to see him doing. So, uh, Vargar, um, excuse me, Eustace is having himself a game. Um, oh, he must have been sending this during while it's going on. Yeah, he did. So he goes, it's one nothing going into the third. All the pressure is on him, and he's handling it. I don't know how long uh, about a long-term backup solution, but Eustace is streaky, and if this is the start of a heater, that's perfect for the abs. Georgiev definitely needs work and practice time. Um, and then he said, after the game was over, I feel bad for Eustace. He had no offensive support. Yeah. He is dead yeah. on. Yep. Can't you have Nathan that. McKinnon, the end. Yeah. Easton, uh, absolute waste of Anunin's best game of his career. Oh, great call. In, in, in his young career. So, uh, you know, and I think like this, this must, it, it's like two sided for, for Anunin right now. And one, like one aspect, like, sure, like he, you, he wants to win the game. Uh, but on the other, like he's got to feel good about how he's playing. He's got like th- this is a confidence builder for him, really. Yeah. And if you have Bo Byram, who's flying up the the left hand side, and he can put that that puck home, you're, we're feeling a lot better than we are right right now, right? Because yep. you had chances, you had chances, and uh, in the end, it was just you didn't you didn't get it done. But from Annan's point of view, he probably has got to be feeling a little bit good about himself right now he only gave up two took the team to overtime had that great stop against comfort came up with some really big saves he didn't get the two but personally he, he played great so he's probably feeling good yeah what was the last time we talked about an avalanche game we always talk about the avalanche winning despite their goalie now they lost despite their goalie so yeah yeah so um all right that's about it for the the subtext crew so if you want to get involved in that sign up Links in the show notes. All right. Last thing we got to get to is our sound check. Lockdown Avalanche sound check. Kyle and I pick a song each that uh, we feel best summarizes the most recent game. The songs go up on playlist over on Spotify, which you can follow. Just search for LOA sound check volume number three. What do you got for this one? Avs Red Wings. Look, if you had one shot or one opportunity, seize everything <laughs> you ever wanted. One moment. Would you capture it or would you let it slip? That would be lose your son. Yeah, from Eminem. I thought you were going to go the whole song. I thought you were going to. You know, I could. This is a thirty-minute show, and yeah, no, the Avalanche vomited their mom's spaghetti all over them. They lost this one for Usus Annan, and in Detroit, they it's going to be a long eight-mile home. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's good. Yeah, perfect. I, and you know, I was just putting the, the two of those things together that it was in Detroit. And he's, yeah, there you go. Um, I'm going Alice in Chains with this one straight up. No excuses is the song. Everybody knows that one. It's because it's really the long and the short of it, Kyle. Yeah. Is, you, you know, you, you can you can say all the right things, do all the right things. In the end, it's the results. And, and the results are... You didn't. You should have had two in this game. I feel. I really feel like you should have had two in this game, 
and uh, there's there's none. There's there's no excuses for that. No, so, no, there, kind of, you can't point back to a call or a miss or yeah. a shift. It's it's a it's a complete team effort. There's no excuses. You should yeah. have done better. Overall, like like Madam Battleax said, like good. It was a good game. Yeah, it was a good game. I thought the Avs did a lot of good stuff, but you, you still have the blips here and there. Um, and the indiv- individual efforts, you know, we talked about Miko and stuff like that. So we'll see where we go from here because you got two really tough games coming up. At least they're at home, though. So we'll see how that goes. We will be discussing that uh, next week on Monday when we will be back and anything that goes on over the weekend. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about it on Monday. So thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. He is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked on Avalanche podcast. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you on Monday.